Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely and talented wife, Miss Southern Shell, and we got a guest with us, Mr. Craig Verhaga, the barbecue ninja himself. How's it going, Craig, man? Man, thanks for having me, Malcolm. I tell you, it's going really, really well and wonderful job on the last name pronunciation. Oh, it's thanks. Very, very impressive. <laughs> matter of fact, I think that's the second time that's ever been pronounced right. <laughs> um, but uh, no, no, it's it's uh, everything's going good, as good as it can in the in the uh, new world that we're living in. And, uh, you know, um, so just trying to make the best of every situation. That's right. Well, we are fresh good off. Attitude you, to have. You came in. That's right. That's the best attitude, right? Yeah, it's the only one you can't have. So, 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 we asked. Me and Craig have been wanting to do something together for a while, and so we kind of had to keep postponing it, or schedules would get off. But um, we got the opportunity to do a gator video, and that's what we cooked. It. We cooked it last week, and then we're recording. Uh, Craig's here. We're going to record this podcast. So. Uh, we're gonna that video. Is this is the podcast gonna air after the fact this show? This podcast will come out after Friday. the video. No, before so the video. so so we cooked the gator, but we're gonna do the podcast with Craig since he's here. We're not releasing the video till next week, but we're gonna talk all about it. Awesome. <laughs> so does that sound okay to Man, you, Craig? That's a great subject. All right, it was a good good uh, time. <laughs> so Shell has made some notes and questions, and Shell, do you want to kick it off, or you want me to, or what? Yeah, go ahead. We're going to do this. I'm not good at interviews, Craig. We're good at hanging out and just talking. Uh, well, so if we get off script, it's perfectly okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. going to probably happen. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, uh, I just wanted to talk about the back, your background a little bit, like how you came to, because we met you through Competition Barbecue. Right, right. Long time ago. A long time ago. <laughs> yeah, we, we've uh, we've been at it for quite a while. Um, I, I actually just started uh, – I wasn't long out of college, uh, Delta State, and and there was a local competition there, Oktoberfest in Cleveland, and um, there was some guys that were went to school with, wanted to kind of put a team together and and get in the Oktoberfest, and and we did that, and that man, that's been some twenty five, twenty six years ago, I think, maybe yeah. twenty six years ago, uh, date myself now, but uh, we got in that competition, and and uh, uh, we we made the finals, you know, first pro competition. Oh, wow. And yeah, we got third place shoulder. So <laughs> wow. immediately, you know, you get bit by the bug. It's one of those you walk the stage, especially the first time, and it's and it's kind of over. But um, we we stayed together for a few years after that. We did a, a couple of Memphis and Mays, and and through those uh, few years, uh, met my barbecue mentor Gary Roark and the Ubonds uh, crew, and and you know Leslie and Heath and and that whole group, Jennifer's sister Kevin. I went to Delta State with 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 them. Yeah, and uh, so we really, Beave. yeah, Beave, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Beave and Aaron, Claire, and and Vivian, the whole the whole family there, and and so uh, after the the last Memphis in May with my other team, it was pretty apparent and obvious we were going to kind of go our own way, you know, like guys do out of college. They get married, have kids, start doing yep. families, moving away. And and uh, Gary called me up, and he, I, I think over the years, he saw that I really enjoyed the barbecue. I enjoyed the people and, and really uh, wanted to still be a part of it and do it. And he called me up, and he said, hey, man, if you want to keep doing it, you know, why don't you join our team? And you probably know – Back then, I mean, he was burning it up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, Man, Yubon's Barbecue—they've been, they've been uh, in the Memphis and May circuit scene for before my time. I yeah. mean, they you know, probably some thirty years. Yeah, um, it's been that long. So to get to go under uh, under Mr. Gary's tutelage. <laughs> and learn, uh, you know, get off his knowledge, man. Dang, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was it was definitely an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. Uh, you know, to to so to get taken under his wing, so to speak, and to to learn not only barbecue from him, but just life itself and, and family and you know things like that. So yeah, I, I jumped at that opportunity. Yeah. So not only do y'all did you do the competition barbecue with you bonds, y'all turned it over 
into the festivals too. And and so you, you do a lot of that, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, that came some years later. Um, it, it uh, we, we kind of established ourselves pretty well on the barbecue circuit and built our reputation up and, and uh, probably uh, it's been 10, 12 years ago, Leslie and Gary opened up the restaurant down there in, in Yazoo city and kind of made a destination down there and, and was building this reputation. And we got invited up to the big apple barbecue block. In, yeah, in, in New York. In New York. So, uh, you know, that was a wonderful opportunity. And, and uh, so we did that, and that just kind of one thing led to another. You know, we got invited to another event and festival, and and it kind of got to the point to where we had to make a decision. You know, are we going to still, you know, take a chance on a weekend to maybe win a trophy to break even? Or can we do these events and know that we're going to go and make money? <laughs> get paid, yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. Get paid to feed people. Well, you get to share your barbecue with the masses. Yeah. And that, I mean, I love that. I've never got to go actually cooking one. I've been to several barbecue festivals. But that's one of my goals, to get to go on that other side and hang. I want to come hang out with you guys at one of the big ones. Well, you're, so I kind of get a taste. You're always invited, <laughs> as long as you bring her. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> she's got to go. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, and plus, you know, we we had our barbecue sauce on the market, and, and uh, Yvonne's had Bloody Mary mix that it came out. Oh, yeah, out. it's so, a good one, too. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was part of making that decision. You know, can't do we go to an event on a weekend that everybody has a barbecue sauce? It's hard to market to them. Or do we go to like New York and get in front of 150, 200,000 people that would see our barbecue sauce and, and like taste it? And and taste yeah. it. Yeah, we were giving out samples on Madison <laughs> Avenue of Bloody Mary mix. Really? Yeah, little little shot cups of it. Uh, of course, it was non alcoholic, but not all of it. Yeah, but not all of it. Huh? But anyway, at the time, <laughs> and so you know that was that was putting us as ourselves in such a in front of a, a whole new new group of people and, and ones that, that had the buying power to, to buy our products and, and, you know, go to another level with it. Yeah. And you're building your brand still at the same time, probably at a faster pace. too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely at a faster pace. We saw things really start to accelerate when, when we started putting ourselves in front of that many people. So somewhere along that line, y'all were doing festivals, the barbecue ninja came out made an appearance <laughs> he showed up yeah yeah go ahead and tell me that, that <laughs> yeah he how did. did that shell may not know how it happened i kind of know because you've told yeah. me the story before i just right. like it well it, there was a actually we were in new york at, at the big apple barbecue lot party and we had a, a film crew there doing a documentary on us and you know i've always worn a bandana when we cook you know you saw I sweat, and you know. Oh, me, I mean, me too. Yeah. Maybe I need to get me a bit. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just, you know. I just keep uh, a sweat towel. <laughs> I got one of them too, you know. Uh, but anyway, so they were there filming, and I just kind of went off to the side. And that's 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 kind of when I put the bandana on, that's that's time to get down. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's go time. Right, that's right, your go time. Go time. Yeah. So, uh, and I knew it was getting that time, so I kind of went off to the side, and, you know, I rolled the bandana up, and I put it on, tied it, and I turned around, and a guy with the camera was right there. He kind of filmed the whole he was watching yeah. you from behind. Right, right. Get ready. Yeah, and then I turned around and, and he had it in my view right there, and I looked at the camera and I and he said, "The barbecue ninja arises." And, uh, and when he did that, I just I, I did a bow yeah. to the camera and I kind of threw it up, you know, and and uh, so that that it was born. It was born. A ninja on, was born on Madison Avenue in New York. And uh, but you know, it was kind of it was kind of wild. I didn't really embrace it for a little while. I, you know, it was it was kind of amongst us, you know call me that or something and and uh and it was just uh, a few years ago leslie and i went to went to australia and did an event there we were featured pet masters at, at a uh at a barbecue event there and and that's how they introduced me you know was as the barbecue, the barbecue ninja, ninja, the barbecue ninja <laughs> and i was and you know i saw the people's reactions and you know, i was like there's something to this you yeah. know mm-hmm. this is this is something that i need to embrace and and bring back with me so when i came back from australia um, that's when I changed my, my, my Instagram name. That's when I, you know, changed in it, all the, the stuff that I was using as Seaver Hogger, Craig, Hager, anything like that. I changed to the barbecue ninja. And, uh, in that same year, I think I told you I was, uh, and while we were going to Australia in the airport in Memphis, I got a call saying that I had been chosen to be on chop grill masters. Oh, so it was like, okay, you know, we got some. Some some stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you got a, you got a chance. That, that's your mo- that's your moment. That's your big right. break, right? Yeah, you're going on national TV, and and so I had to kind of 
thinking in my mind, I need to prepare for that. And, uh, and, uh, Aaron Campbell, that was on our cooking team, she was doing, um, advertising and, and PR, she was doing, uh, uh, logos and things like that so for a living that was yeah yeah that's what she was doing so i sent her an idea and kind of a picture of what i was thinking as far as a logo for the barbecue ninja and uh and what she sent back to me uh is the current logo and of course it hit the nail right on the head yeah first go yeah it was like (laughs) drop the mic man this is this this is me you know it was bandana Mm -hmm. the beard sunglasses i mean it's just it was me so uh i had that locked in and then of course, you know, once I did the Chop Grill Masters, had that, and just a lot of a lot of momentum. How'd that go? I mean, what, what was your experience like on Chop? I don't think I've ever talked to you about your experience on it. <laughs> well, it, was, <laughs> it. It was all great and fine until I looked in that basket and I saw a vegan lobster. A uh, vegan? What's a vegan lobster? I, that was exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> what in the world is a vegan lobster? Um, but it uh, it's actually made from like uh, – sweet potato powder or something and it had the texture of rubber and it had the flavor of imitation crab meat oh and, man yeah that sounds disgusting i mean i'm from mississippi yeah we don't need imitation <laughs> nothing i mean I was maybe some like, bacon bits on an old salad bar but right, that's right. just <laughs> but i mean you know just we, get to the pipes cleaned out we, 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 for the meat there's maybe some people that've seen vegans around but they Maybe really not. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what it was. I was like, we don't have vegan lobsters in Mississippi yeah. Delta. So that really stumped me. Um, but, uh, you know. <laughs> what would you do with it? <laughs> Actually, I thought it was very creative. You know, I, I got a blender and I blended it down. And I've got, I made like a rendition of a Caesar salad with it. You yeah. Know, I put lemon in it. I put dill, grind it down, fresh herbs. And, and uh, uh but I got chopped from a salad on a Grill Masters episode. So <laughs> the meat I cooked on the grill was perfect. Yeah. But you know, the but salad, the salad eh, yeah. you know. Anyway, uh, but there was a great, great uh uh experience. Um the, the people I was on there with, I'm great friends with now. Uh Andy Husbands and Megan Day. Mm-hmm. Um I did an event last year at Meg at Andy Husbands uh restaurant in Boston yeah. got invited up and, and Leslie and I cooked an event there like a pit master's dinner. I uh, still great friends with him. Megan just saw her in Kansas city about a month ago. I did an event there. She came out just to support me and what I was doing. And, uh, they got great things going on too. And, yeah. uh, so, uh, uh, Lori freeze was there too. She's barn goddess down in Florida. So, you know, it, it, it came out to be, uh, uh, the friendships, yeah, that's you know, cool how you can, yeah. you know, still stay in touch and, and, and make friends with somebody that you're on a, a competition with like right, that. I mean, right. It, 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 it was it was pretty awesome. So do you like that style of cooking more so than like competition barbecue? No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um the, the the clock was brutal. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, we're low and slow guys. You know, we usually Plan for a lot. We know our turning times. Yeah. We work backwards. A lot this of time. Is- <laughs> uh, if I had to go back and do it again, which I I don't know that I ever will, but we'll see. Um, I'll practice against that clock. Yeah, yeah. We got a taste of that doing World Foods the past two years, and it's different when you get in there in that kitchen and the clock's on and it's running. Yeah, I mean it's. Mm-hmm. It, but we've always had a plan going in. Do Do you get time to plan, or is it like here's your basket, go? No, it, it's it, you get you've got the basket in front of you and you actually get to open up the basket and put the ingredients out one time and then put the ingredients back in. And then the next time you open the basket, it, it's, it's go. It's go. It's go. Wow. It's go. So there's no you got hint, a, hint of what you may be no, cooking. There's no hint. I, yeah. I mean, you know, if they would have hinted that there was a vegan lobster in my second basket, yeah. I would have withdrew. I would have dropped out. <laughs> I knew it was over. I'll tap, tap out on that one. <clears throat> well, with everything going on this year, um, how have y'all handled, you know, not having festivals and, and these events to go do? Or what are you doing to stay busy? Man, I tell you, it's been brutal. It has been brutal. You know, that this has been the people of you bonds. I mean, we, we've spent the last 22, three years together, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, it, during from really March till 
till November. We're together at some point during a month and, and at least once a month, right? Yeah, yeah. At least. Mm-hmm. Uh and uh that 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 part's been real tough. Yeah. It really has. Um because uh and I know I talked to Leslie and I you know talked to others on the team and everybody's in the same boat, but um you know, so really, you know, this year I started my job with Royal Oak back in January. I got that down here to talk yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's kept me that's kept me busy. Um but there again, you know, part of my job with Royal Oak also was uh was was gonna be doing these festivals and representing them and marketing at these festivals and doing doing uh social media content, things like that. So, you know, it's kinda have to redirect those those thoughts mm-hmm. and, and uh uh and, and just, you know, do do different things to to keep going forward. You gotta keep going yeah. forward. Yeah. I mean, we're the same thing. We haven't been able to travel like we were wanted wanting to do this year, so it's You've had to find new ways to make it stay busy and keep things rolling, that's for sure. Yeah, and there's some friends that I only see pretty much yeah. when we compete, and I got pretty used to seeing them. <laughs> <laughs> speaking and I seen speaking them in a of while. competing, uh, congratulations on your, your finish. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah I, we didn't, I didn't even bring that up. Oh, I, I, we we got to stop the we press right here. The... Did you bring your award? Oh. So, okay, we didn't talk about last week. We went to, we mentioned it on the last podcast. We went over to Melbourne, Arkansas, and we cooked at, um, it was Steaks for Sheepdogs. That was the name of the event uh, held um, at the golf course there in Melbourne. And there was 78 teams, I some think. Some of the best. Seven, yeah. Some of the best <laughs> steak cookers. No joke. Yeah. In the world. Yeah. We'll say the world. Not just Arkansas, right? The world. Yeah. I think it's safe to say the world. <laughs> it really is. And Shell cooked, and I signed up, but I let Michael cook, and Shell finished where? Third. Third. And she got her golden ticket. Did you bring it? Is your, is your purse back here by chance? No, it's She's been good. carrying it away around. And every time she goes in it, she'll say, oh, there's my golden ticket. There's my golden ticket. That is oh, oh, okay. I've heard that four or five times, at least four or five times, if I've heard it once. I, when I turned that steak in, I told my mom, I was like, that's the best steak I've ever cooked. And he was like, I think so, too. I, th- I knew you had a shot. Yeah. I really did. I it was like a good, a I mean, we had, a, Michael cooked a good steak. I ran time and. Yeah. Did the stuff for him, but uh, he had a good steak, but yours was, it was awesome. Yeah, I was happy with it. So, so congratulations. Now I, now I get to go to Fort Worth. Now she gets to go. She she qualified for the um, the championship, the world SCA champ- championship. World yeah. championship. World yep. championship. So you got a chance to be a world champion. Oh, my god! Are you going to do it? Yeah. It's in I March. Can't not. You can't not do it, right? <laughs> I think well, Waylon, my brother's already qualified, too. I'm the odd yeah. man out. You haven't cooked one this year. I, yeah, I haven't cooked one. So. <laughs> I think I may have to come to that. Just yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You need to. You need to. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to be there. You need to qualify. Uh, I'd rather just be there. <laughs> yeah. Support, you know. Uh, so back to the Royal Oak uh, deal. Mm-hmm. Tell everybody what you do for Royal Oak. Because that's kind of how we got, me and you got hooked back up together was right. through Royal Oak. We, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I, I, I got to be an ambassador. Was it last year? Year before last, I mm-hmm. think, and you and Leslie were already part of their ambassador program. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't long after that, and I'm gonna let you take over and and and, and kind of give your story. <laughs> what happened after that? <laughs> well, you, you know, we Leslie and I are the U Bonds team. It goes back to Gary. We've we've been long, many years users of Royal Oak and believers of Royal Oak products, and uh, um, you know, and so it was just a natural progression. We've been representing them. For many years, and and you know, Royal Oak actually was bought out, and and you know, by another we got it, we're family owned out of Miami, and and when they did, they brought in a marketing team, and they wanted to really really emphasize the marketing and, and what they're doing, and so you know, Leslie and I got more involved in what in what Royal Oak was doing, and and. You know, for for over the last twenty five years, I, I was a, I was an insurance salesman, and I did bar I did that to support my barbecue habits. Yeah, <laughs> but it was it was a long time you know goal yeah. to to do barbecue full time, and uh, it's the people I wanted to you know be around. It's the people I wanted to be involved with, and and uh, you know the opportunity came up. Uh, they had a retirement at Red Royal Oak, and and you know approached me about the position. of, you know, some marketing coordinator and, and I'm over the sponsored, uh, teams. Uh, I'm also in charge of the ambassadors and, you know, I, I do a lot with the social media, uh, with Royal Oak and, and, uh, I'm, I'm kind of the, I'm kind of the barbecue expert there. 
Um, you know, so you're the face of Royal Oak. Is what you're telling? What I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, only the face a uh, mother could love. But, uh, but uh, when are they gonna put it on the bag? When the, when we, no, we need the ninja logo on the bag. I think they want to keep selling them. Uh, but uh, but no, and and you know. It, when, when they approached me about the, the opportunity, you know, I'd been, I've been in insurance for 25 years and, you know, I had that set and retirement set for that. And I was like, you know, if I'm ever going to do this full time, now's the opportunity yeah. and what a better company than one that I already believe in. And I've represented it over the last many years of your cooking career. Yeah, I mean, yeah, basically. Yeah. That's, that's how long it is. And, and so, you know, if you really believe in something and you really you know, have it in your heart. It's really easy to, to, to preach that. And, yeah. and, to, yeah. and it, you just, it resonates from you. Just like when you use it or you talk about it, you can tell, you know, you can tell that it's something you believe in and you use and, and it works for you. We used to have to go to the really, really bad part of town in Memphis to buy Royal Oak. Yeah. To get, that was the <laughs> place we could get. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. To get yeah. our, I was buying um, the old, you know, everybody used to cook with the chef's delight. Mm-hmm. That was the restaurant, you know, the kind of the, the commercial version. And, and yeah. people, and the bar, us barbecue teams knew that and have been using it for years. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's the charcoal store down there on Florida Street. Mm-hmm. You know, it's in the hood in Memphis. <laughs> and we go, I'd go down there and see Mr. Pert and yeah. buy Royal Oak. That's where we always got it. That's awesome. That's awesome. But, and, you know, I, I decided to take that opportunity. I decided to retire insurance and, you know, full-time barbecue. Here it is. You know, it's what I wanted. It was a goal I had and, and, and just blessed to be able to, to, to get that opportunity and, and to take it. And, uh, uh, just, it's been awesome ever since. So this was your first official year with them, right? And then COVID hits, and you don't get to do. I mean, how's that been? You hadn't got to do any of the traveling for Royal Oak to go. All the festivals canceled. I mean, yeah. Are they are they like Craig? What are you doing? Are, <laughs> are you twiddling? Are you twiddling your thumbs? Well, I, I'm not good at that. You know, I'm not good at idle. You know, I'm not I'm, sitting at home. That's no, not you. That's not me. You know, I want to be doing something like you know, I want in gathering up content. Still, you know, I'm getting back out now and doing doing events, but on a smaller scale. I'm going to individuals. You know, I've been to Kansas City and, you know, cooked with one of our ambassadors there. I took a trip to, to Texas and cooked with probably four or five or six of our, one of our ambassadors and a bunch of our teams gathering up social media content, doing recipes. You know, come to Hernando. Come to Hernando. <laughs> come here with you, one of our ambassadors. And, and then I, I'm fixing to go to New York and do an event there, and I'm going to uh, do do some content with a chef up there, you know, just do some different recipes with some fresh seafood, things like that. And I get back and, and, uh, you know, we've got, of course, American Royal canceled. So, I know. Yeah. you know, that there's supposed to be a, a big event in Oklahoma that weekend. And probably I need, got teams there. I need to go and see. So probably take off to Oklahoma. And, and, uh, so, you know, there, there's plenty to, to stay busy. So how many teams do we have in the Royal Oak? program do you do you know how many sponsored teams uh, sponsored teams we we're right at i believe 85 teams that's pretty um, strong yeah that's a know? lot yeah and and you know we we really um you know we really looked at teams total uh uh package as far as the sponsorship program you know i i've been asked you know what does it take um and it, it takes not only being a a good cook uh, finishing well in competitions. Um, it takes, you know, having a good reputation on the competition trail. Yep. It takes diversity of cooking. You know, a lot of people can cook ribs. A lot of people can cook chicken. A lot of people can cook brisket. But, you know, what else do you cook? What else do you do? Um, we also, you know, we're big in social media. Our ownership is big in social media. They like to see, you know, that's basically letting the world see what you do. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so, you know, their involvement in the social media, not only post followers, um, you, you know, traffic to get, that was also viewed and looked at in the sponsorship program. Uh, so there's a lot of criteria there and we, and we like to have, you know, kind of spread out through the United States. You sure. Know, we like to have represented East coast, West coast and, and in the middle. Uh, so that was, that was important because, you know, we have retailers all over the United States. So, uh, you know, I just got a, a, an email before I came here saying, Hey, we've got a plant somewhere in Missouri that, you know, we need somebody to do a, you know, uh, 
a cooking for the employee. So, you know, I'll get a team close to there. They'll go and cook for the employees yeah. and, and do that for us. So, you know, it, there's a lot of things that, uh, that, that we ask of our teams, but there again, you know, we, we do make a big commitment to them with charcoal and apparel. Yeah. And also like to cross brand with them. Yeah, you sure. Know. And promote them. Promote them. Because Royal Oak does a good, great job at that. You right. know. Yeah. That is a huge, huge emphasis of mine is if you got a product or in your sponsored team of ours, we want you to, to showcase that product so we can put it on our social media and put it out to our people <laughs> and, uh, and, and help. You it grows love. both of you. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. It's more of a partnership than a sponsorship. It is. It because, is. you know, yeah, you want to do good for the brand, but the brand's also helping you by giving you exposure to all their following. So that's, you know, it, that that's a great thing Royal Oak does. I, I mean, they've done it with a lot of my stuff. They've shared some of my stuff. But right. I know they'll put stuff on the website too. I mean, it's you know, yeah. across the social media platform, they've really come on with it. Yeah. And, and you know we we're we've only really been working at that really hard over the last three four years so a little late to that game but we're we're we got the hammer down on it yeah. and uh so we're gonna catch up and pass so well, i'm gonna put you on the spot are they gonna have the royal oak invitational that was talked about because you know the last year was the first year right yeah last year was the first year and it was a very successful event um you know it was uh it was attended by teams from all over the country. We, we had a team fly in from Washington state and, uh, and participate. And, and as of today, you know, the world's changing by the minute. Right. No, <laughs> and, no joke. Uh, and so, but <laughs> schools, as of, especially yeah, yeah, now exactly. football, gosh, I know it's heartbreaking, but uh, you know, as of today, you know, we're still planning going forward. Now we are going to have to do some modifications with it for the social distancing and, and the, you know, we may have to limit the number of teams. We may have to limit the gathering part of it. So there's going to be a lot of things that really have to think about and, and to do and to work on. But I'm not liking what you're saying, Craig. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm the one that's going to be doing it. Yeah. So, uh, trust me. <laughs> I'm going to have to like it. It's going to be difficult. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't envy you because, um, you know, as bad as us cooks want to go out and cook, I mean, you know, there's nothing to get your hands are tied a lot of times. Yeah. Right. Right. Because, I mean, what's the, you know, the risk involved if, if you were to put together an event and something was to happen, there was to be a massive outbreak and you're linked yeah. back to it. All of a sudden you're looking at all this legal stuff and right. bad press. I mean, who wants all that? So I understand, right. but I mean, it, it, comes, it just, I'm just venting. It sucks. Yeah, it, does. <laughs> it really, man, I, trust me. This has been killing you me know, all year yeah. long. Anybody, you know? yeah. um, it seems like dominoes have been falling steady, but yeah, it ultimately comes down, you know, the ownership wanting to, to accept that liability. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, it would be difficult if, you know, I get this thing together and we all get together and something does happen, you know, in the back of your mind, you got to think, well, you know, I was, yeah, you were the fault. I was, <laughs> I was the one that put this together and let it happen. So, but, uh, but uh, nothing would thrill me more for it to happen and nothing come from it. And everybody goes, have a good time. I mean, Mike Shore last year, put this thing together. He put his heart and soul into this event and it was right before his retirement. And so it, he put his stamp on Royal Oak with this event and it would, it wouldn't thrill me anything more than to carry that torch on yeah. and to make this event happen again, just to see, you know, his vision and what he made happen continue. Yeah. But what I liked about it, and we didn't get to go because of World Foods last year. I missed it. But y'all really put it on as an appreciation, not only for the employees of Royal Oak, but for the appreciation of all the teams. And that was what made it an invitational. You were bringing in, you know, Royal Oak teams that were that were some of the best teams out there that, you know, and, and gave out some awesome prize money and cool trophies and everything. Yeah. I mean, this is – and when, when the way I saw how Mike was setting it up, I was like, this is going to be a big deal. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have people breaking their neck – just to want to get in the Royal Oak Invitational and it's, you know, it's exclusive. I mean, it's, you know, it is. And, and, you know, we, we, when it first started, cause I, you know, being on the barbecue board, you know, we, we actually talked about that and, and how it was going to come together. And, and I remember when the idea was first thrown out there to even do it. And, uh, um, but it, it, it was a very exclusive event. It was, it was some great prize money, some, you know, great trophies. Yeah. And, uh, so I was hoping to be there this year to try to get some, win yeah. some, you know. Well, all I can you tell you is, is if it does happen, <laughs> I better see you. Oh, yeah. There. No, we'll be oh, there. We <laughs> contemplated skipping World Foods. Like, we'd already paid. We'd won our way into World Foods. We were going to World Foods, and then we actually contemplated, like, yeah. you want to 
Go drop out and go to Georgia, <laughs> <laughs> cook it royal. Good oak. conversation we had. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, let's talk gator. Okay. So we cooked when we had. You called me up and he's like, "Hey, what's these dates like? I'm gonna be coming through Memphis and I can shoot down and we could do a video. Can we do a gator?" And I was like, "Yes, <laughs> yes, let's do a gator." Because I've never cooked one. I wanted to learn how to cook one. Yeah. So I got a ton of questions about gator for you, but I wanted to. Uh, we had a little trouble sourcing the gator. You had uh, where you normally get it from, which is yeah, Louisiana Crawfish they, Company. Yeah, yeah, and they said you can call them up, order a gator. Most yeah. of the time, I guess, well, certain times of year, maybe this ain't a good gator time, but yeah, uh, it's it's you know they they do crawfish also. I mean, they send crawfish up to New York and make two drops, two different days, four hundred pounds of crawfish a time when I'm up there cooking crawfish. So I mean, it's just wonderful. But uh, yeah, and. In my mind, I was thinking, hey, we can just call them up. And they'll have gator and they'll send it. But they said that, you know, it was going to be a few weeks. Um, yeah. So I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> Malcolm, we, we <laughs> so got a problem. Was, you know, we were trying to back up and punt. But uh, <laughs> fortunately, I had, had had made a contact at Mossy Oak, and they're starting up a new gamekeeper. Is it gamekeeper butchery? Gamekeeper butchery. And and it's going to be a new, like, exotic meat uh, butcher shop, I guess. And I think they're going to do a lot of it online. Yeah. And so I called the guys and I said, you know, y'all told me about this thing y'all got going on, Gamekeeper Butchery. Y'all got any gators? I just put them on the spot. And he's like, when do you need it? And I was like, <laughs> well, we're going to shoot a video this week. He said, I'm shipping it tomorrow. And I was like, oh, that is awesome. <laughs> so I texted you right away. I said, man, we yeah, got a gator. Got a gator. <laughs> I said, I don't know how big or what size. I told him I needed a 30, pound, 30 32 pounds, something like that. And they said, it's coming. And so uh -huh. sure enough, it shows up. And then I got this gator. It was froze, um, already skinned. And I guess – this is typical, right? They come. Yeah, yeah. They're, uh, you know, it's I guess a juvenile gator. It, it, if I had, I don't know, man. How old do you man, think that was, gator was? Thirty pound gator. I, uh, you know, year maybe. Year uh, two. Yeah, oh, okay. they're they're farm raised. They're harvested. You know, of course, they're USDA and all that. You know, I just can't go. You know, and take one and yeah, yeah. come and decide to cook it. it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> go to the hunting camp and get them. Right, right. <laughs> can't do that. But uh, but, but yeah. you do hunt gator, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And a matter of fact, uh, um. August 28th, it'll be opening season uh, at lunchtime on that Friday. Really? You, you <laughs> take, you're, you're all officially taking off work that weekend and going uh, gator hunting? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be gator hunting that weekend for sure. Um, it's something that started doing. This will be probably our fifth year doing it. And uh, when we first got into my hunting camp, we, we have a private lake on us, about a 38-acre lake. And, and we got in the boat and started riding around this lake. And all of a sudden, we were looking around. We are like, Man, we got gators everywhere on this thing, <laughs> man. You know, and and it has started. Of course, you you know you got swamp people going on. Yeah, and it's kind of become yeah. a popular thing. And and uh, now we don't hunt the alligators like swamp people. You know, when I when I do a a, a presentation or or I'm doing a gator uh, live event or something, I always ask everybody. I'm like, everybody, anybody seen swamp people? And they're you know most everybody will raise their hand. Yeah, we see them. Like, we don't hunt gator like yeah. that. You know, we go out at night. And, you know, we shine a light, see their eye reflection, and then we, you know, kind of sneak up with a trolling motor in the boat and kind of get us close. And then I, I've got a, you know, snag rod I throw out over the back. And then when it bumps, you know, you snatch and hang on because, uh, you know, <laughs> you, you could have a, you know, you don't know really what you got. I mean, sometimes if you get close enough, you can tell if you see their nose out of the water and the eyes, you can kind of tell how big it is. But uh, sometimes you have no idea and just – you know, you just hang on and, and keep trying to direct the boat, you know, where the line's going and, and try to wear it out. And once you wear it out, it goes to the bottom and then you get a hook in it on the bottom, pull it to the top and it does that death roll and wears itself out. And once it's worn out, then you pop it. Pop it. <laughs> dispatch it. Yeah, dispatch. Harvest it. I think that usually means a bullet to the brain. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Harvest it. That's where the hunting part comes in. So yeah. it's kind of a combination of gator looking to spot them and then gator fishing to hook them and then gator hunting, gator shooting to get them. Yeah, gator hanging on and <laughs> yeah. then gator hanging. Yeah. But so how long does it take to fight a, a big, like what's the biggest one y'all have caught? Uh, we, we've caught ones right at 11 feet. Which that's a um, that's a monster from yeah, Mississippi, right? That's, that's a big gator. That's a big gator, you know, and big, big gator for anywhere, I'd say. Right. <laughs> and that's that's male. The biggest female we've taken we've taken one female, um, and it's been nine feet, which yeah. you know, um, like nine ten is the state record female, and it's like thirteen feet or some thirteen something is the state record for male. So, uh, um, 
but yeah, and you know, we just we've got an abundance of them, and and you know, we get private land on our tags, so we're able to to harvest uh, four of them a year, two under seven feet, and two over seven feet. So, um, it's it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, the first time that you're sitting there and you're yanking on this alligator and it comes to the top, and you know, you're the first one we ever caught was like ten foot seven inches. You know, and I'm just like, is it doing all the stuff like on swamp people where it's thrashing at the boat and trying to get in? And uh, you know, it, some have done that, some have not. It just depends on how tired they are once you get them to the yeah. top, you know. And um, uh, but but you know, swamp people, it's just different because they're fishing, they're hanging lines, and you know, the alligator will swallow yeah. the bait and it's just there when they get there. Yeah, you know, and uh, and now when you see Willie and swamp people with that throw line and he yeah. goes out yeah, open yeah. water and hooks that. <laughs> Have you tried that? Look, you got you one of those? That's the baddest dude on the. I've, I've always said <laughs> that. I've always said that. Look, I, he'll I, jump out there and catch snakes. It don't matter, man. Let him bite him. <laughs> man, that, Willie doesn't weigh you know 160 pounds with with rocks in his pockets. Yeah. And, uh, but I can tell you what, I want him on my side. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'll tell you what, if you take to the swamp, that's all you want to go with you. Right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, he can handle it. himself. Right. How big is the boat you're in? Did it's you a say big that? boat. It's, it's, you know, 19 feet. Okay. You know, it's, it's a wide it's boat. not like a Pedro yeah, or no, whatever. No, no, <laughs> no, yeah. no, not after a kayak. We're in a big boat, big stable boat. Yeah. You know? Because I, anybody ever goes with us or is a guest or wants to be, because we're, a lot of times we'll take a, a, a kind of a, a camera boat or a chase boat or something like that, and I tell them, rule number one, stay in the boat. Yeah. <laughs> do not fall get out, out of the, the boat. boat. <laughs> That's a- stay in the boat. You do not want to be in the water. Has anybody fallen out? Not yet. Okay. Um, not yet. Let's hope that don't. Happen. So, how did you learn how to cook these gators? I, you know, it, it just, it was one of those things. It was a natural progression. I figured if I was going to, you know, hunt them, harvest them, I cleaned the alligators myself, uh, you know, and, and I also processed the meat very meticulous in doing that, uh, put the meat up, uh, you know, going to cook it and, and eat it. So, and the, uh, the first whole alligator I ever cooked, I think I told you the story earlier, I cooked with, uh, Matt Pittman at me church. He called me up and he was like, "Hey man, you know, you just thought the alligator hunting thing was so cool. He's like, let's cook one, you know. We'll do yeah. a class and and of course I taught wild game in the class. I did venison backstrap and duck poppers and cooked alligator. Of course I did flamethrower chicken wings too. <laughs> um, but uh, that was my first time to cook a whole alligator, you know. And, and I'm like probably like you, you know, cooking's time and temperature. You know, yeah. it's how how hot you cook it, how long you cook it, to what temperature you cook it. That's the basic, you got that down, you can yeah, do, cook is, anything. Yeah, right? Exactly, that's the basic <laughs> of cooking. So uh, I told Matt, let's do it, you know. And and uh, and of course, you know, Matt has has a good following. He's done a wonderful job with with his products and social media, and so he got a lot of traction after I did that. And uh, and so you know, we've been running with it ever since. I probably cooked thirty, you know, since then. Uh, to cook like fifteen last year alone, and uh, so got it figured out now. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. Get, do you think they get better and better every time you cook one? Oh, or yeah. do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like a whole hold. Mm. <laughs> get better and better. Yeah, and uh, you just you know, it's like anything else too. You tweak it a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, like, could have done something a little different. You do it a little different. It's a little better. Well, so we cooked this gator, and then I didn't know when you told me we were going to cook a whole gator. I thought we were going to cut up all the parts of it and you'd have the front legs, you know, and you'd have some back strap and you'd have the hind quarter and all this. I didn't know that we're pretty much just eating uh, the tail is the main area where we're getting the meat from. Now, there was some meat on the legs and there's some jowl meat, but mainly that tail is what you want. Um, explain, um, you know, what the muscles in that tail are and what all's down there that, that we were really concentrating on for the video. Yeah, the the, the tail... Um is is the bone structure in the tail is like a like a cross um it's you know just like this you've got two muscles that run across the top two muscles that run across the bottom and the bone tees you know straight down through it yeah straight down through it and in the in the bottom muscle you've got you know the tenderloins that's where they are and uh and so you know you you just the, the main thing is, and then I think they'll see it in the video too, is, is you, you know, you got to get in there and you got to get the fat out. That's very important. Um, that's where the kind of fishy and wild taste will come into. It's very unpleasant. 
Not nope. very unpleasant. It's a little unpleasant, but you you don't want that in there. That surprised me because I was I've always heard that you know you cook a, a big alligator or a whole alligator, it's got a fishiness to it. This one, because you took the time to take that fat out, there I was didn't no have any fish in it. You could you wouldn't you wouldn't have known if you hadn't seen where that meat come from. You wouldn't have been able to say, "Oh, that's alligator." I don't think. Right, right, because once you get that out, it's very neutral. Um, you know, we we had layers of flavor on that the outside of that alligator. You know, we put that that. Awesome, awesome killer hog rub on it. The the Cajun rub. Uh, what's what's the name? King crawl. King crawl. Yeah. Man, <laughs> love that stuff. It is so good. Uh, we put the king crawl on there. Plus, we put the hot. Uh, well, I brined it too. Yeah. Now, before you got there, you told me you got to brine it and something. I said, yeah. "What?" And you said, "Use your imagination." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I did. did. I did. Well, I took my Cajun turkey brine and that I that I you know soaked turkeys in, and then I just kind of crawfished it up i added some mm-hmm. some dry crab and crawfish balls from the liquid <laughs> and i added some lemon and you know had some garlics in there so it was all good stuff that, that went was with so it good, Brian. <laughs> yeah and it had sugar and salt and all you know mm-hmm. all the other stuff that goes in it but it was simple real simple but yeah. man it yeah. that gator really soaked it up it you could taste spicy. it yeah it was yeah it was spicy. in a good way like yeah not hot but yeah. like crawfish seasoning spicy yeah, yeah. And, and you know that that brine process too just it put a lot of moisture in that meat too yeah. and that's what it does and that's why you're like should, should I brine like heck yeah let's, let's do that <laughs> and uh and of course you know once we got that fat out and everything um you know we, we were like do you want to stuff it or or what and you, and i said it'll look really cool if we stuff it and you're like yeah let's stuff it let's let's do that so um and it just it, it, the stuffing works so well. yeah talk yeah. talk oh, about yeah. where how you found the stuffing? Well, I was actually um, cooking. This was this was a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago. Now um, I was at the Houston Livestock and Rodeo, and um, I was cooking two alligators there. And the 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 company that brought the alligators, the Alligator Sausage Company, uh, I was stuffing one with their sausage, so I was cutting it all up, and I was I wasn't going to stuff the other. Um, just going to leave it like it was, and and. A, the, a girl there brought a uh, boudin dip, and uh, and I tasted that boudin dip. It was it was you know spicy boudin. It had cream cheese. It had uh, bacon, real bacon bits in there. Uh, it had ranch dressing. You know the powder ranch dressing, spicy ranch dressing. Um, like the Cajun food group. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and and once I ate that, you know, on a cracker, I was like. Wow, you know, and I asked her, I said, Do you have another pan of this? And she said, Actually, I do. And I said, Well, do you mind if I stuff this other alligator with it? And she said, No, go ahead. And and so I stuffed the other alligator with it. And naturally we had hot dog buns there. We were eating sausages on and things like that. And I was like, Well, shoot, we'll just chop this gator meat up, put the stuffing on that bun, and we'll make a we'll make a lot a gator roll, which is a redneck lobster roll. Redneck lobster roll. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. And when you told me about it, I was kind of iffy. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I was like, lobster, you know, gator roll? Come on, man. Mm-hmm. I was thinking, when you told me gator roll, I was like, oh, he's going to take this gator and cook it and then wrap it up in bacon. And, you know, like we did d- duck roll ups or deer roll ups. Yeah. I was not expecting that at all. Uh-huh. And that boudin stuffing or the, the boudin and cream cheese and bacon. Oh, man, that stuff was so good. It was. Yeah, it's, it'd be good stuff. I told you in a tennis shoe. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, could, you, could put, you, could, you put that you could put that in, in a lot of things. You know, yeah. stuff. Very versatile. No, I want to make a dip out of it. It like would a make a really dip. good dip. Yeah. 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 Kind of that, yeah. I love boudin. I mean, I've stuffed, you know, all kinds of stuff with boudin. And then and, and adding that whole cream cheese element, like turning it into almost like a, a dip or a cheese ball mm-hmm. kind of. I mean, it was mm-hmm. so good. That's what we were talking about this weekend, how many um, ancillary contests People have won using the boudin and cream cheese stuffed chicken or yeah. pepper or whatever. Mushrooms or yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah. You can go a lot of different ways with, with, with that base, you yeah. know, and just play off of that base of boudin and cream cheese, and you can go so many different ways with it. So we cooked it on that outlaw stick burner. Mm-hmm. That was my first time cooking. That was a borrow pit from, from Mark over at Swine Life BBQ. Mm-hmm. What about Jolene? Uh, 
Well, <laughs> everybody asked me why didn't I cook on Jolene. I said she won't let a daggum beast like that on her. <laughs> I didn't know if I wanted to put a guy. I didn't know if a gator was going to leave a smell. I wasn't going to taste putting it on my jambo pit. <laughs> I said outlaws don't care. <laughs> Mark said you can use mine. Talk yeah, I, I, when I got there, I walked up hey, in the carport and I saw Jolene. You thought we were going to cook it on that? Did you said, pull what it out a there? wonderful yeah. know, smoker to cook this alligator on. <laughs> no, that wasn't no, what that ain't happening. Cooking. If we'd have did some ribs, I don't, we, we, we'd cook ribs on there. I, I can see where Brisket, we are with you know, something like that. <laughs> Gator? No. Nah. No. We did that on Mark's pit. But, hey, man, I was super impressed with the way that outlaw ran. It, we we put maybe – started out with Royal Oak charcoal. Yeah. About three – I don't even know if it was a chimney full that would go in that little fire basket. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of tumbleweeds got that going, and we added a stick, and we cooked the gator – about four and a half hours total, and yeah. I bet we burned maybe four sticks of wood. Yeah, that was it. It stayed two seventy five the whole time. I mean, it did a fantastic job. Very impressive, for sure. How long did it take to cook? About four and a half. So it was. Yeah. yeah, we cooked it to. You were looking for one hundred sixty. Yeah. Let it yeah. rest carry over. Yeah, yeah. but. Uh, and you know, you I hit it with that flamethrower. That, that was what I was fixing to ask it, you. It it. it, it Puts a little yeah. more temperature in there too. So we got it done. Kind of known for. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, we got the gator done, and he's like, "Well, we gotta set, we gotta glaze it." You know, we put the sauce on it, and I gotta glaze it. And I was like, "Hey, you gonna glaze it? I need a flamethrower." And, <laughs> and I didn't have mine. I do have a flamethrower. I think it's in it the was, trailer. I think it's in, my, in one of my barbecue trailers. But we had to go to the hardware store and buy another one. Yeah. And so tell me about that and how you came up with using a deckum. Weed, it's a weed torch, pretty much. Yeah, you know, and and I actually do carry a flamethrower around in my vehicle with me, but I just a week ago bought another vehicle, and I haven't yeah. transferred over the flamethrower from my old vehicle to my <laughs> new one. So normally I've got one, you know, in the Try. back of the Tahoe. Yeah, right? ready to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's always ready to, at any time. But, uh, but yeah, you, you know, the flamethrower, and as y'all saw, it, it has a very, very unique and useful and it, it creates a flavor profile too when you caramelize or brulee, as as you were like, yeah, cage of brulee, what I called it. <laughs> you know, once you once you hit that sauce and and it starts, you know, singeing the and and burning those sugars and and it just creates a a different flavor profile for that. Really good, yeah. It's like it, candies. It it pretty much yeah. candies it. It does. Yeah. It does. And and it the the flamethrower came about a few years ago too when I was uh, I was in New York and. We we were doing the event up there, the Big Apple Barbecue Block Party, and that year we were we were starting to cook chicken wings, and uh, we cooked eighteen thousand chicken wings in two days. Eighteen <laughs> thousand? Yeah, I can't even. Uh, I, I was that a dump truck load. <laughs> yeah, and, and as much as I love a chicken wing, it took me a little while before I could get back into the chicken wing game. Um, but but I was actually lighting the roll up lump charcoal. Uh, in the in the charcoal grills before, and this was early, you know, this was early in the morning, nine o'clock, eight o'clock, and I had the flamethrower lighting that lump charcoal, and I was just, you know, paying attention, of course, to the charcoal, and I looked up after a little while, and I had fifteen people videoing me just lighting that, charcoal. Yeah, yeah they were the amazed. The yeah. And I was like, I don't know if you could do that in New York legally. I really <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was in Chicago. Oh, was that um, good? <laughs> but, but anyway, you know, I, and, and you know, kind of a you know that light bulb went off in my head, and it, because usually in this event we will have a line that that, and this is no exaggeration, that'll be sixty, seventy yards long, and that's people out in front of our booth that are waiting in line to get you know the chicken wings. So you, you have a captive audience right in front of you. And these the people up there, they, they love to see what we do. They love to see us at our craft. And um, so I was like, well, I'm fixing to break this flamethrower out in front of all these people. And, and I'm going to flame, flamethrow these wings that we're fixing to put on this charcoal grill out in front of them. And uh, and I did that for two days, and um, so you ran a, a, a flamethrower for two days. I did, and my shoulders they cried <laughs> mercy so bad. It's one of those that uh, didn't set in until yeah. like two days after, and I was like, oh, you couldn't lift your arms. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because you're sitting there yeah. like this the whole time. But uh, but no, and and of course it, it worked as far as getting the attention. But what it even did more than that, it worked as far as 
the flavor profile. Making a delicious yeah. wing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because we would smoke those wings on Old Hickory Pit, the DW, before we would go to the charcoal grill with them. And then the charcoal, of course, was another flavor profile. We put it over that Royal Oak lump. And then we would sauce it with the Yubon sauce, which is another flavor profile. And then I would, you know, caramelize that sauce the flame, yeah. with a yeah. flamethrower. So it was just layers and layers of flavor, and it worked so well. So um, I've been flamethrowing just about anything Torched. and everything since. <laughs> so what, do you, what do you call it? Like what, what do you call on those wings? Uh, uh, the the, the flamethrower. Flamethrower yard burn. Flamethrower yard burn. <laughs> yeah. yeah I oh, love do, it. I'm fixing to do some in New York yeah. this weekend. So, uh, but yeah, and you know, there again, it's it's one of those, it's not only functional, but it does get, you know, if you're going to do large events in front of people, it's going to get some attention. Oh, it's a show. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a showpiece yeah. right yeah. there. If you're up there running and they got three foot flame over some, <laughs> over some, <laughs> over a big charcoal grill. What did I tell you, Malcolm? If you're going to be in the circus, you need to be the monkey. <laughs> At least be one of the monkeys. <laughs> At least be right? one of the monkeys, man. <laughs> <laughs> we the go. wings are one of my favorite things. I yeah. mean, I love them. That's what, you know, best part of a chicken to me is chicken wing. Uh, but I've never had those. So I, that's kind of wanted you to tell me how you did it. So you just basically, rub them and smoke them like everybody would mm-hmm. and then put them over a charcoal grill mm-hmm. and then baste them with sauce and then hit them with the torch on both sides. You flip them and hit them again or you just do it on one side. Well, it's, you know, when we're doing that many, it's, it's, that's for sure. A lot of, no rhyme yeah. or reason. Yeah. You know, the basket that we use today, a lot yeah. of times we would shake the basket, you know, and hit yeah, them, and and hit them again. The yeah. Hit them again. That was an old hickory. It's it's the new old hickory gator basket. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> originally, it was intended for chicken wings. That's Luke, what it's Luke the, we want to uh, yeah. some royalty. Like, <laughs> yeah, for the gator basket. Gator basket. <laughs> it worked great for a gator <laughs> basket for moving you know uh-huh. moving the uh, that gator in and off the pit. Yeah. Did y'all take a picture and send it to Luke? Uh, I, I we we need to. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. we get done here, it's, it'll be. He's going to say, why don't y'all cook that on the old hickory? Yeah. <laughs> then I'm going to say, I didn't want a gator in my old hickory either. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but no, I love wings. God, I can go eat some wings tonight. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> so when's the next time you're cooking another gator? Do you know? Uh, that's a good question. I'm going to be hunting them before I'll be cooking another one. Well, do y'all cook, um, y'all cook it at deer camp? We do. Camp? We do. We, we cook it. Uh, I, I, matter of fact, not too long ago, I did some gator rolls for the guys there because I cooked those out and about all over the country and I've never cooked them for my guys at the yeah. camp. And so I finally, you know, was like, this is, you know, this is what I do. This is what um, I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is my calling so, card. Right. So do you think. Like if somebody at home don't want to cook a whole gator, mm-hmm. but they they had they could get some gator tail or something. How mm-hmm. could you do? You could still do that recipe, right? You could, yeah, you could take that piece oh, yeah. of tail and then and kind of butterfly it open and yeah. stuff it. Yeah, a lot of the gator that you can get, that you get now that you can order from from hopefully the uh, the you know, Monte Oak will have some. gamekeeper gamekeeper Game- gamekeeper will have some of those and they they tenderize it and it is tail pieces of meat and stuff and you mm-hmm. could you know you could hit it with some with a rub and you could grill it and then chop it up and make the gator rolls with it just yeah you can, so you could take that stuffing and cook it in an iron skillet mm-hmm. as a dip and it's still going to do the same thing exactly once it gets heated up to 165 internal it's ready to go exactly and you just put your chopped gator over that man that'd be a gator skillet that'd be good Mm-hmm. <laughs> It'd be real good, oh Gator Skillet. We keep talking. We're gonna come up with a lot yeah, of stuff. Yeah, before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get me. You get me just to thinking. My wheels get to spinning. I'm thinking. Same I'm way. thinking about uh, what you call that chicken lo- wing, that lobster one earlier. It was a. Did you, did you had on chopped Grill Masters? Oh, uh, the vegan lobster. Yeah. Well, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, I would that. say I would have to turn it into some kind of bisque or something, and added like crawfish mm-hmm. or something. Man, the only good thing to do with that <laughs> is throw it away. Throw it away. <laughs> Don't even go for it. Yeah, huh? It's. You know impossible what? lobster is that what it was? <laughs> yeah. like, like Burger King's Impossible Whopper. Yeah, it, it's it, Impossible it. Lobster, <laughs> not lobster. Yeah. Can't believe it's not lobster. Yeah, you can. Yeah. It's like nothing like lobster. Mm. <laughs> nothing like a lobster I've ever had. <laughs> oh, Michelle, what else do we got to talk to Mister Craig about? You got anything else? You like any questions you'd like to ask him or anything? No, we... one thing that when you were talking about your logo and coming out with the barbecue ninja. I remember when you. Changed everything. Went from Craig to Barbecue Ninja and put your logo up. I was like, right. I told Malcolm, I was like, look at this. That's so good. Yeah. That is so good. Yeah, I, you I, did. Yeah. I was like, that is dead on mark. Great marketing. So good. Well, I appreciate that, man. And, you know, and a lot of it was just just timing. 
you know, yeah. being being at the right place at the right time. A and, lot of things are. And, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and you know, we've we've learned from some mistakes, and we have uh, we've turned some of those mistakes into you know advantages for us. And, yeah. And uh, but but it was it was a lot of good timing, but but you know, just as we know with the social media part of it, I mean, content is king. Um, you know, he's Scott that, that follows us as Leslie's husband. He, he's got a wonderful eye. He's a great camera guy. Yeah. He takes great videos. Um, he takes great pictures and, and all I've got to do is post them, you know? And, and so that's, that's been a huge, huge part of, of you know, building that brand mm-hmm. and social media, but, and, and just being persistent and being consistent and just keep plugging. That's it, man. That's, that, that's what it takes. Really. That's it the does. biggest advice I can give anybody is. You got to be consistent. Start somewhere yeah. and get consistent and keep doing it, and don't listen to anybody else. Don't I mean, just, give up. I mean, <laughs> yeah, don't don't listen to the naysayers. Don't give yeah. up. That's right. the main thing. That is it. That is it. Keep going. Because yep. before you know it, you know it'll be snowball, and you'll yeah, you know. and then and you'll get a little thing in the in the mail. That's right. That's, uh, <laughs> that you got a million followers. By the way, congratulations. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Congratulations <laughs> from me. Congratulations <laughs> from Royal Oak. That is huge. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, where can everybody? find you craig uh cleveland mississippi <laughs> <laughs> just come down to the four-way stop and <laughs> that's during the week uh it'll be chatham mississippi at lake jackson hunting club on the weekend <laughs> no uh, uh my instagram is at the bbq ninja and uh my uh, uh business page on facebook is the barbecue ninja and uh you know twitter is the underscore bbq underscore ninja and uh, um, you know, I, I just established a, a YouTube page that it's um, coming, right? I, I, it's, I think that would be it's great. Be on the yeah, way. I well, think your video you're great on the camera. Yeah. You got you got great information. You deliver it good. And it was a thank you for coming and, and and sharing that gator recipe. And I hope to I hope to learn some more from you, man. I want to see some more of this wild game stuff because yeah. I'm you know that's really what. Um, I love, I love, you know, when I'm not barbecuing, I'm out hunting or fishing somewhere. Right. So well, I've got a lot of good ones I can share with you too. I was just so. going to say, I'll make a promise. Yeah. yeah. If you make a promise, we we'll go one for me, one. We we'll go one I'll for one. You. Exactly. All right. And you teach me how to cook a steak. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> got to do that. That's for sure. Um, but I'll let but her yeah. fool you now. She can cook a mean steak. Uh, hey. I've been third. Part, so. I mean, she's going for a world championship. Going for I'm the going world for a world championship. championship. I mean, I, I can get, but you, you guys, I mean, you know, I appreciate you having me. Y'all are, y'all are just very, y'all are quality people more than, than just great barbecue cooks and, and, and whatever. But uh, I just appreciate y'all having me and having me at your home. And, and that means a lot. And, well, and uh, I hope that's the first of many trips. There. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know it. It's Thanks, been a sir. blast. I, yeah. I love the gator. I really did. I like the gator. Look, roll. when you went back for the second gator <laughs> roll, I was like, "Oh yeah, she got her. I got her." So, Shell, it was creeping me out a little. I'm not gonna lie. Nothing creeps me out. Carcasses, wild game, whatever. I've seen a lot of things butchered, but that gator <laughs> laying up on the counter. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know if it's the hands or the nail. I don't know. <laughs> but I ate him anyway. Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> Where can they find us, Shell? If you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram. And hey, we'll be back with another recipe and another podcast next week. So y'all keep an eye out for the gator video. It's yeah. coming out. And then we'll see y'all next week. Thanks for hanging out with us. Peace.